Hi everyone, hope you're all well. I've brought you out in this beautiful sunny weather, not to rub it in too much for all of you going into those freezing cold days of lockdown. So you've got to keep warm. Um, but over here in Melbourne especially, we are feeling fantastic today because we are out of lockdown uh, and we're ready to start our summer sewing. And if you're like me, you know the certain things that set off that feeling that summer is coming. Uh, in my garden, of course, it is when the hydrangeas start appearing. The roses are all beautiful at the moment. There's actually a little spider on that one. I'll show you up close. Uh, actually, a lot of you have asked about our wildlife in Australia. We do get a lot of wildlife, especially out here in the bush area. Um, I don't know if you guys are very familiar with huntsmen. They are gigantic spiders that live out. Actually, sometimes they come in the house, but they're pretty harmless. But they're huge and hairy and they're really ugly to look at, especially if you don't like spiders. But I actually, uh, just getting off track, I actually had a phone call from one of my twins. She was driving to her boyfriend's house. This is about 10.30 at night. And she uh, rang me with a terrified phone call that there was a huge Hudson spider had just run across the dashboard of her car. And of course, spiders don't really scare me. I'm usually the one in the house that catches the spiders and uh, evacuates them outside. Um, but the rest of the family, including the hubby, are all pretty much terrified. Um, yeah. So, yeah, she rang me on the side of the road crying and said, there is more harm that would come to you from standing outside your car on the side of the road that late at night. Just get back in the car uh, and, yeah, try and just scoot it off the dashboard. But, um, yeah, she was pretty beside herself and she ended up getting up onto the roof somehow and just drove off. But uh, you have to laugh. It's not funny if you're one of those people that are terrified of spiders. I'll put a picture of a huntsman up just to show you how big they are. They, they're pretty giant. But yeah, I would much rather a spider than a snake, for example, which um, we don't get many of those, but they are around. And because you can leave them alone, they don't come out and uh, intimidate you. But yeah, you are best to see them and just move away. And yeah, they can be very poisonous from where we're from. But as I say, they, they usually hide. They don't come looking for you. You may accidentally um, step on one if you're out in the bush, but pretty much leave them alone. Yeah, the hydrangeas and the roses are a really good sign that that nice warm summery weather is really close by. And the yeah, hydrangeas, especially for Christmas time, is one of those flowers that comes out and it reminds you that, yeah, Christmas is coming. We have a really busy month coming up for November. I have um, two of my kids, my eldest Phoebe and my son Sam, are born two days apart. Um, so that wasn't very good planning, but it's always a very big week in our house, the two birthdays, and once they're over and done with, I can focus on Christmas. I've got to apologise, I'm feeling a bit under the weather this morning. I um, yeah, I tend to suffer from like, diverticulitis, colitis. It really hasn't been confirmed what it is, but you can get those horrific attacks um, from flare-ups if you've eaten a bit of the wrong kind of food, and that for me is anything you know, fatty or takeaway or um, yeah, anything, especially any takeaway food, as soon as I eat it, I get a flare up and um, it just sort of keeps you bedridden for the morning or a couple of hours until the painkillers kick in. So yeah, it's just unfortunate. I know a lot of people suffer from it. Um, if you're one of those people, I, I feel for you. Even if you're one of the people that suffers from any kind of chronic pain, living day to day with that kind of thing can be really crippling. Um, not only physically but mentally because it means that you it can throw your day into chaos if you have plans um, but yeah it's yeah it's something we've got to learn to live with unfortunately but um yeah i'm lucky it can just go away as quickly as it came so um and good luck for all of you who are entering lockdown i know a lot of you are starting that now so um yeah i'm, I'm my thoughts are with you i'm feeling your pain i know how long it took us to get the numbers down but we are very fortunate here in australia especially here in melbourne we've had eight days now of zero cases so i think it was all worth it all the hard work and all the um yeah all the loneliness uh it was all definitely worth it if we can get the COVID numbers down so Back onto the patterns. Before I get started, this is my Mandy Boat Tea, a really, really loud, bright, vibrant fabric, of course. I love the bright, vibrant colours. Um, yeah, great, great little staple top. If you haven't made it, it's a free pattern from Tazuti. I will link that pattern below for you to go and have a look at. I have got a huge fabric haul coming very shortly. This will be the next episode. I wasn't quite sure whether I should show you the fabrics and patterns together because it might be quite a long episode. So I'm going to show you patterns first and just the ones that I've bought and they're not all necessarily brand new patterns that have been released some of these have been around for a while but these are all ones that I've been planning on I'm planning on making very shortly and then I will show you my fabric and pattern pairings together for the next episode so there's some really exciting fabrics there I can't wait to show you um yeah it's just so nice when you get that change of season over so 
Now, if there's a bit of background noise, you might hear the symphony of mowers out because that bit of nice weather everyone's out in the garden here, especially in my street. So you, especially if I start filming, that is the key for everyone to start making noise. So yeah, it can be a bit annoying, but I think everyone's just enjoying the beautiful weather. So hopefully it's not annoying you too much. So on to my patterns. Okay, I've got a really great uh, few episodes that I've got planned here about pants, particularly elastic waist pants. If you're like me at the moment, that's all you want to wear. It's really hard when you've got a lot of these beautiful patterns wanting to be made and you just think, I oh, know I'm not going to wear them at the moment because uh, I want, I'm wanting comfort. Um, yeah. So these are the ones I've picked out for you that I'm going to show you, particularly first the Moon and Broad Glee Pants that I've just downloaded and I've just finished making a pair and I've got to say I am thrilled with how they've turned out. I can't wait to show you. These are going to be a firm favourite pattern of mine to use because of the versatility of the elastic full waist or the half elastic waist and the beautiful slat pockets. Um, the great thing about Moon and Broad is that particularly for me and for especially for a lot of plus size sewers, the size range starts at around the 14 to 16. Only very few patent companies that are doing that. And I think it's fantastic. A lot of people might say, well, that means I'm left out um, in the lower size range. But I think for a lot of the plus size community who've been looking at, um, you know, a lot of patterns have missed out on for many years, but a lot of the other patterns are just um, basically drafted for a slimmer or smaller body and then graded up. And then not always, uh, designed for larger or fatter bodies and I think that way that if you've got that area around the middle like you might have a bigger tummy or hip area no matter what size you go up you're going to get that overall uh, size increase in every area particularly for me I know I always have to grade in and out uh, usually between 14 to 16 and even to 18 around the middle sometimes depending on the pattern so if you've got a pattern that's specifically designed for larger bodies uh, and then you can go down to their smaller size range and that will fit like a glove. So I am absolutely thrilled with these pants. I can't wait to show you, especially uh, I find too with the, the way the rise is on them. I think, yeah, you're going to love them. Um, so if you're lucky enough to fall into Moon and Broad's um, size range, which is quite a large size range, I think you should be pretty happy. Um, you're going to love these. I love the fact that you don't need to do a full bottom adjustment, full, full seat adjustment. If you're like me and you're always pulling up pants, um, I just think these are a winner. So I can't wait to show you. The pattern I've been wanting to try for a while is the Megan Nielsen Flint patterns. Um, Megan Nielsen patterns, of course, usually come from a size zero to size 20 in one size range and then 14 to 30 in the other size range and that comes in the, that, that's for the flint as well and they are a crossover tie front or button front um collot style with a pleating at the front now these are really lovely i'm looking forward to making those up and i've seen them on quite a lot of people if you're like me and you get a brand new pattern and you want to google and see what people have done with it and you can see all types of bodies and a more mature person, how it's come up on them as compared to a younger person, I think it really gives you that scope of um, what you want to do and how you want to wear it then. So looking forward to making those. They haven't got elastic waist, but maybe I could bear with that and just, just make one non-elastic waist pair of pants would be fine. This is a brand new pattern that's uh, been out for a probably a couple of months now heading towards a month and a half i think it's a closet core patterns led dress love the two different versions of that it's uh yeah you've got, you've got three different versions of that actually you can make it in a maxi as well but i love the fact that you've got quite a lot of fabrics that you can make it with and really change the look of the pattern so um looking forward to that and my next minerva make with the fabric that i have had gifted to me for that um but i think i'll show you last month that would be made in a beautiful cotton lawn tropical print. So really looking forward to that one. Uh, a simplicity pattern that I've purchased. So I actually love a lot of the new simplicity patterns. I think they are looking really, um, really wearable, really lovely. I love the look of a lot of the new styling on the simplicity patterns. I think they've really kept up to date with um, just, just the whole package envelope. I think it's great how they've, um, the fabric they've used and they've made it look a lot more appealing, keeping up with more modern looking patterns. I think that, yeah, Simplicity 8657 in a beautiful caftan. It's got a lovely deep V at the front and back. And I think a beautiful crinkle fabric would be lovely and light. It's also a really nice top as well. So I'm um, looking forward to doing that one. Pattern I've been wanting to make for such a long time, I decided to buy the physical pattern instead of downloading the PDF because I really love um, Friday Pattern Companies pattern envelopes i think they're just lovely to keep um yeah this is the beautiful adrian blouse and it's yeah it's got a gorgeous statement sleeve 
I think this would be a perfect style to wear right throughout the year and that is from an extra small to four extra large so a really popular lovely top um, I think you would have seen a lot of people make that one already keeping on with the Friday Pattern Company theme this is the gorgeous sage brush blouse I think this is going to be beautiful in a soft lawn fabric the beautiful little frill I'm unsure as to how big the puff sleeve are going to look on maybe I have seen it on quite a lot of people and really uh, love the look of it um, this I think is extra small to seven extra large so yeah really lovely top and I think the Adrian top might go up a little bit larger in size I'll have to have a look at the pattern envelope for that one as well but yeah this is one of the newer patterns this is a gorgeous um, Vogue pattern for pajamas that I found recently I thought this would be really lovely to wear the, either the nighty or the pajama set I will show you the back and this is Sandra Betsina and um, she's a very famous Vogue designer and she also has a great series on Craftsy if you uh, if you've um, become a member for Craftsy I recently have when it was a really great price for the 12 months I think it could even possibly be still on there um, there's a great pants fitting sessions with her you can really narrow down your pants fittings and the problems troubleshooting you may have um, so she takes that class so she's designed quite a lot of patterns for Vogue this including and that is the line drawings it's got gorgeous stretch lace as well that you can include on the front a scalloped neckline I just think it's stunning so I'm just wanting to find the right fabric for this because of course the shops are all opening again here and I'm really dying to take you guys on a shopping trip especially out towards the city into a lot of independent fabric stores so I will be on the lookout for a beautiful lace or even a stretch mesh would be really pretty on that um, so just probably the nighty or the pajamas I haven't decided what I'm going to do with that yet but I really love that I think that's really unique and I love a um, different sleepwear pattern that's not just a traditional button front pajama set because yeah I'm more of a nighty person and I'm always looking for nighty patterns wonderful subscriber of mine from Darwin and that her name is Kerry. Kerry actually reached out and asked if I would be interested in making a couple of patterns if she bought me the patterns herself and I just thought that was a really uh, lovely kind gesture for her. She actually sent me through a coffee donation uh, and I went and bought the particular two patterns that she was talking about that she really wanted to make them but she wanted to see them reviewed. So I was very happy to do that especially because I actually loved the patterns one of them is this simplicity pattern 8640 and it's a really different architectural shape um, dress that's, that's perfect for being made in linen or even uh, seersucker cotton something like that would be perfect as well but I'm really interested to see how that comes up and I've got the fabric picked out for that as well the other dress she actually was interested in making that she purchased for me as well was the Sydney designer dress from Starlight Patterns. So that one's just been made up and I've got to tell you, I am in love with that. I looked at that pattern for quite a while and never really thought of too much about it. But this is a really good opportunity for me to make something that's a little bit out of my comfort zone and loving how that's come up as well. So that's going to be on my October makes which will be out very shortly as well so stay tuned for that so another pattern that recently has been gifted to me by the lovely Janine at Sewing Revival is the Nick Hour dress the Nick Hour dress has just been recently released in the uh, statement sleeve version so I just think this is gives you a three good really opportunities for three different looking dresses in the one pattern so if you are not familiar with Sewing Revival I recently did their Mallard coat episode with Alex Judge and loved how that came up and I've also got a couple more of her patterns I'll be doing in my love of linen episodes also coming up very shortly um, love the wearability of her dresses and the ease of making them as well her instructions are also fantastic love the sleeve so very tempted to go for the big sleeve so another couple of patterns I also purchased from Stylark just recently one was the hope dress um, I really love the look of that raglan sleeve dress and their freebie of the month, I think last month I decided to pick up the dress to get the top as well, was the Wilma woven top. That also I think will be stunning in a linen. And also the Anita blouse. Now very similar to the Roscoe blouse, but really interested to see just the styling and if it's a little bit different to Roscoe. The Roscoe blouse from True Bias, of course, one of my favourite tops to wear. It is very oversized. Patton Emporium, I have a couple of new patterns from Patton Emporium. I actually decided to get a couple of their very well-known patterns that very loved as well. This one is the XL top, which is like a high-low top. You can make it in quite a few different versions. Um, you can make it in a short top, long top, a high-low top, a midi, or the high-low maxi is very interesting as well. And the dress, I think that would be a really uh, lovely top to have to get me through summer. And their Starstruck 
side tie top that is another fantastic pattern that you can make in a whole variety of sleeves to mix and mash up as well so i will list all these patterns below in the description box so that if you're interested you can go ahead there and look for those the funny thing is about sewing with one of your family members how great it is that you can share patterns my daughter actually phoebe decided to she's writing to the assembly line patterns and i haven't actually made any from them before but i'm really excited to make uh, one she's actually just made the cuff sleeve dress top a really brand new pattern for them and loves that and this is the assembly line uh, apron dress this is a really um, one of their most famous patterns that a lot of people love. That gorgeous crossover apron back. Um, yeah, very excited. I'm going to let her make that one first, see how it comes up. That'll be a really good staple to have in the wardrobe as well. Getting back to elastic waist pants, this is another great pattern I've just uh, recently acquired because I decided I heard so much hype about these. This is a Nini Collotz, full elastic waist, widely Collotz. Uh, now recently I've been listening to um, Sew and Tell. Now if you don't know Sew and Tell, it's a really great sewing podcast. Now the four ladies that run this uh, podcast actually are all from different backgrounds. You've got um, Meg who works for Verta Style and then there's Amanda and Kate. I think they all have different sort of areas of sewing. Uh, one might be into the theatre and costume and the other one I think runs Sew so Daily as well which is a great little uh, website to look on. They've been doing a great episode of uh, quite a few episodes now on their favourite pants and the one I will link the episode below if you're wanting to go and have a look at that. They all spoke about different pant patterns and the ones that they've loved the most, they've loved wearing, they've loved making. I think the good thing about hearing that is that sometimes if you make a pattern and you might do a review and wear it once or twice, you really aren't getting that true review till you've worn it out and run around in it and sort of um, yeah, been able to compare it to other things. So they all spoke about their love for these mini collots and I am really desperate to make these because I think they'll be great in a rayon or a tensile twill for heading into the warmer weather. But yeah, I've got quite a few plans and I've got a lot of fabric to show you as well. I know I just mentioned that too. So I'll be doing a series very shortly on the love of linen. So that will be my love, my favorite linen dresses, uh, linen pants and skirts and things like that. And I'll be making a playlist of that so that you can go and have a look through and see uh, the patterns that I've mentioned and how well they've worked for me. Thank you too for all the love on the q a episode i know that that was a bit out of my comfort zone i haven't done many of those sort of uh one-on-one -on -one episodes yet as far as sort of getting sort of off the track of just all the sewing information and having a bit more of the personal stuff in there so yeah i want to say a big thank you for all the love i received on that be safe if you're in lockdown as i say send my best thoughts to you the best thing i would say that i could offer any advice is to try and keep yourself busy um, I know that I had many thoughts of, um, you know, doing cooking every day, doing yoga, taking all the self-care that I could do because I had all the time in the world. None of that happened. Don't beat yourself up if you don't get to do all the things that you planned. Um, but I must say I've got a lot of stuff done that I would never have probably, especially when Hubby was home for a few of those weeks as well. And we just did things like clean the garage out together. I, I painted half the house, tried to wear myself out because, of course, had a lot of trouble sleeping. It didn't really help. But I think that if you feel that you've accomplished something in a day, so if you're not in the mood for sewing, just really keeping yourself busy, especially mentally busy, because it can get quite worrying the more that you think and worry. And, yeah, you start to wanting to turn the news off. And I think a lot of that media and news attention can be really um, bad for your mental health so yeah i would suggest putting a great podcast on putting a radio on and yeah try and get a bit of sewing done if that's what you feel like thank you very shortly for my newest fabric episode now don't forget if you haven't subscribed and you want to keep up to date with my episodes yeah you're free to do so i welcome any new subscribers and the notification bell will help you remain alerted to any new episodes coming out as well the best way for you to support my channel of course is to give it a thumbs up because that helps other like-minded people find the channel and you can bring us uh, a bigger better sewing community together keep safe keep sewing and bye for now